case the F stands for fuck you. <laughs> Not an easy skill to learn. I've been practicing it for many years. What is going on, everybody? It's your favorite ninja, Sets BK1 from Ninja Nation Gaming, and boy, am I hyped to be bringing you yet another brand new awesome zombies video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you all how to complete not one, not two, not three, but 30. Yes, 30 secret side easter eggs on the brand new Call of Duty Zombies map, Alpha Omega. Yeah, you heard correctly. In total, there are 30 secret codes, and each one of them do something special. From free points to other rewards and secrets, this is an insane side easter egg, and I am super happy to be sharing them with you all. Now, before I get into the video, I just want to take the time out to thank MVP Commander, Blame Rob, Ginger King, and Harvick for helping hunt and record all this footage. All their links are going to be down in the description below. Please go show them some love. We all worked really hard to uncover all these cool secrets for you all to enjoy. Also, if you're new here, sub to the channel for more awesome zombie videos in the future. Now, first, in order to do this, you need to first turn on the power and complete the lockdown in the bunker down below. Then fix the ventilation systems and wake up Rushmore. First, interact with him and let him do his dialogue. Once he's finished, you're ready to start entering codes. Now, just be aware that you can only enter one of these codes per round. You can't enter multiple codes on the same round, so choose wisely. Also, I want you to know that I've listed all these in alphabetical order and timestamped each one in the description below, so you don't have to watch the whole video if you're just looking for particular codes. Just check the description for the timestamps for the ones you're looking for. Now that that's all out of the way, I'm going to walk you through each one individually, starting with secret code number one, which is bank. Entering the code bank will give you and all the players on your team an extra thousand points, which I think is really cool. Next up, we have the code BOOM. Now this one's a little tricky, uh, it's a troll. Entering this code will uh, make the computer spit a grenade at you, so watch out. The next code we're going to enter in is BREW. Now I think this code is really cool. What it does is you can go and buy the BREW perk for half off. The next secret code is COLA, and you guessed it, yes, it also lets you buy the COLA perk for half off, which is awesome and saves you guys tons of money in the early rounds. The next secret code you can enter is the word DOOR. Now this is really cool, but there's a little thing you gotta worry about. It gives you a free door, but only if you can't afford to buy it. So be aware of that, but this is another really cool one. Now, it's time to laugh a little. This one's my favorite, okay? The next code you're gonna be entering in is DUCK. And what this does is, every melee kill that you get, the zombies are gonna start quacking like ducks. Me and my buddy Rob had tons of fun doing this, and I highly suggest you just do this for the laughs. This next one, most of you might know because it was found on the day of the Easter egg hunt. This one is the word EASY. And what it does is it provides you with an undead man walking for the next five minutes, free from the computer. So that's really helpful during the Easter egg when doing some steps. This one's another one of my favorites. The next code you're going to be entering in is guns. And what this code does is it gives you a disorderly combat and starts switching your weapons around in your hand. A quick side note. Be careful, you cannot pull out your specialists while this is active. I tried, I died. Just giving you fair warning. It cycles through multiple weapons that you don't have, and it lasts for about 5 minutes. Now, if you activate this code while you have a pack-a-punch gun in your hand, it'll cycle packed guns, which is awesome. Now, this next code is going to be joke, and what this is going to do is... A Rushmore is going to tell you a joke. Uh, I didn't get it. 
I didn't think it was funny, but maybe you will. So there you go. This next secret code is love. And this is when you tell sexy robot voice that you love him and he gives you an audio quote. So here it is and enjoy. Oh, that's sweet. I love you too. I love all Americans, but don't get confused. I'm not exactly available. I mean, I'm flattered by your expression of affection, but I'm already in a committed relationship with America. Now, this next secret code is pretty funny. And it's pretty cool that somebody in my chat suggested this as a joke and it actually worked. So type in noob. All this code does is slow down the last few zombies in a round to walking speed to make them easier to handle maybe while you're doing an Easter egg step. So it could come in handy. This one, I'm not going to say too much. Type in the word nuke and it'll spawn a nuke to your right. Kaboom. Here's another pretty simple code. Type in the word pack and what it will do is it'll spawn a bonfire sale to your right. Now, I recommend you have a player in your team pop temporal gift before you grab this bonfire sale because I was only able to pack my gun twice. So be aware of that. Okay, now we're on to the next secret code. This one is number 14 and this one is quiz. This one is a mystery to us still. We know that Rasputin starts to quiz us, but during his dialogue, he also says that we can answer him using one of the Vox boxes. So we don't know how to answer him, and he keeps telling us that we're not answering. So we've been looking around for these radios, maybe upstairs, maybe to the left of uh, the machine, but we really don't know too much maybe this is just dialogue maybe this is just for fun maybe it's not so i do suggest some of you fool around and trying to answer this quiz somehow he did ask a question about george washington and i didn't have enough time to get downstairs to hit on the painting but maybe you guys can find something if you do let me know down in the comments below okay people it's party time and by that i mean literally this next code you're going to be putting in is number 15, and it's rave. Now, during the hunt, we thought it was save, but it actually turns out to be rave. And what this does is, once you enter the code, you can go downstairs and have a dance party to some awesome music. I suggest doing this for fun. It's pretty cool. Me and Rob had a blast, and the music is pretty dope, too. This next code is another really awesome code. It's number 16 and it's shed. Now what this does is when you enter this into the computer, it's going to open up the shed door that holds the power up. No more using the door to get the shed open. Now you get this free door too, and you can use the free door on something else. Okay. Now we're back to perk codes. This is number 17 and it's soda. Now, you probably guessed it by now, but if you type this into the computer, you now go get the soda perk for half off. Moving right along into the next secret code, this is number 18, and it's song. Now, typing this into the dial pad, we'll play a different Easter egg song from the mannequin heads. Now, this next code is a must in all your games. It's number 19, and it's Ted. You need to activate my boy Ted because he's awesome. He says some really cool stuff. And if you punch him hard enough, he'll electrocute the whole room and you control your friends. In this case, the F stands for fuck you. All right, all right, all right. Enough messing with my boy Ted. This next one is number 20 and it's time. Entering this in makes Codename Pizza happy because it's killing time. Entering this in the computer will freeze all zombies on the map for 30 seconds. So have fun with this one, but still, I don't see a use for killing time, pizza. Now this next code has to be my personal favorite, and this is another one we found on stream. This one is number 21, and it's Vent. This one is hilarious. All I'm gonna say is, sexy robot voice has a lot on his mind. Psychotherapy mode enabled and not a moment too soon. I have a lot to get off my metaphorical chest. 
For starters, you have no idea how much pressure I am constantly under. Aside from providing for the physical health of all personnel in Camp Edward, I am also responsible for their mental stability and patriotic well-being. Americans, by definition, are the sanest, toughest, most mentally stable people who ever existed. But I have to constantly remind the staff here of this indisputable fact. They constantly whine, make excuses, and fail to live up to my standards. So what do you think? If I should purge the staff and requisition a more patriotic crew, just say so. But if you think I'm overreacting and the current staff is American enough, don't say anything. Oh, that's a relief. I was ready to gas the whole place, but I wouldn't have enjoyed it. Now, these next codes are pretty self-explanatory, but I want to take a second to thank MVP Commander for pointing this out to me and bringing it to my attention. Upstairs in the operations room, there's a note on the desk with a bunch of codes on them to give you guys backstory of the map. And there is some stuff in there you might like to hear if you're a fan of zombies. So, without further ado, here is codes 22 through 30. And listen to Big Sexy Robot Voice tell you his stories. Project MK Alpha is an offshoot of Project MK Ultra, the CIA program exploring the possibility of mind control as an espionage tool. While MK Ultra explored a spectrum of techniques, MK Alpha focused on the use of the highly classified American Pyramid device, located at Camp Edward, Nevada, for telepathic interrogation. Use of the APD yielded positive outcomes in a series of tests, but serious side effects experienced by both interrogators and test subjects were also reported. More on that under APD interrogation. The ADAM initiative began with research into automated servants for public use. The androids were made to appear as human as possible, to function in people's homes and businesses as easily as a human employee. Easier, perhaps, since they required no food, sleep, or salary. The results were very encouraging. Not only did they perform everyday domestic tasks, but they inspired genuine affection in their employers. It didn't take long for Broken Arrow's top brass to recognize the military potential in the ADAM initiative. More on that under Project Toy Soldier. Project Toy Soldier is an offshoot of the ADAM initiative. The focus of Toy Soldier is to repurpose ADAM units for military applications. Work on Toy Soldier began at Camp Edward six months after the facility was dedicated to the Broken Arrow program. Militarized ADAM units were deemed an effective countermeasure to an undead outbreak, and their capabilities were augmented accordingly. After several tests and iterations, a unit designated Sergeant ADAM performed well in demonstrations for the Joint Chiefs. Sergeant ADAM remains at Camp Edward, ready for activation if necessary. The Broken Arrow facility here at Camp Edward, Nevada, is categorized as a black site by the select few in the federal government who are aware of its existence. Broken Arrow was created by the Department of Defense in November of 1963, following the undead outbreak in the Pentagon. That incident was contained and kept classified, but every available resource was mobilized to prevent another such disaster. In addition to locations at Groom Lake and Hanford, Camp Edward was turned over to Broken Arrow for the research and creation of an American pyramid device based on a similar mechanism discovered on the moon. The efficacy and potential uses of the APD are still being determined. The prisoner holding area at Camp Edward was originally designed to detain spies and trespassers. However, its main usage was in conjunction with Project MK Alpha. Test subjects for APD interrogation were kept in prisoner holding and escorted to transfusion before delivery at the APD for their interrogation sessions. 
If they emerged relatively intact, they were taken back to a holding cell and processed out of the base. However, not all subjects survived the process. The transfusion facility at Camp Edwards served as a vital step in the MK Alpha interrogation process. Test subjects were escorted from the cells in prisoner holding and placed in the transfusion chair. Precise dosages of element 115 were then injected into the subject's bloodstream, rendering them susceptible to the interrogator awaiting them in the APD interrogation area. Use of element 115 for this procedure was highly controversial among the few who knew of the program. Its effects were unpredictable, and more than one subject who entered transfusion never made it to interrogation. Additionally, Broken Arrow medical technicians working in transfusion reported a variety of side effects from working with 115 and had to be replaced regularly. One interesting outcome is that base personnel avoided the transfusion facility even more than they avoided the APD itself. The APD interrogation program is a focal point for the MK Alpha program. Numerous tests were conducted with subjects who were strapped into the interrogation chair and given controlled doses of element 115. These subjects were susceptible to telepathic probing from an interrogator located within the American Pyramid device. Initial results showed great potential, with crucial intel obtained directly from the minds of various test subjects. However, adverse reactions to element 115 were observed, and prolonged time spent within the APD had deleterious effects on interrogators themselves, including Broken Arrow Director Cornelius Purnell. The solitary confinement area was where test subjects were taken following APD interrogation sessions. They were held there for several days before being returned to prisoner holding. In the early days of MK Alpha, subjects were taken directly from the APD back to holding. They tended to be unruly, traumatized by having another mind rummage through theirs, and this unnerved subjects in neighboring cells. It was determined that a cool-down period in solitude mitigated adverse reactions, and so the solitary cells were added. Okay, what's that supposed to mean? Do you find this tiring? Am I boring you? <sighs> That's a heck of a thing to input. Why not just pour water on my motherboard, or give me a swift kick in the fatherboard? Or maybe you need to remember something my programmers told me when I was just a little pocket calculator. Only boring people get bored. As always, it's been a pleasure. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I'm Seth's BK1 from Ninja Nation Gaming, and my gun go pew pew. Peace. Ninja Nation, I fucking love you! <laughs>